Infection has been a major cause of morbidity and mortality in the setting of diabetes, even before the discovery of insulin. These infections include tuberculosis, MRSA, and most recently viruses. Increased severity, morbidity, and mortality have been seen in individuals with diabetes during the H1N1 influenza, SARS coronavirus, and MERS coronavirus epidemics. Recent data from China, Italy, and the US have revealed a wide variance in the diabetes prevalence among those with COVID-19. In general, the prevalence of diabetes is less in the non-hospitalized individuals and approach the prevalence of diabetes in the general population. The CDC reported an 11% prevalence of diabetes in those with diagnosed COVID-19 in the US. In this report, the CDC noted that over 40% of people with diabetes and COVID-19 did not require hospitalization. But as with the data from China and Italy, the prevalence of diabetes rises to 19% of those admitted to the ICU and constitutes at least 25% of those dying from the viral infection. So the current thinking is that individuals with diabetes are not more susceptible to contracting the virus, but once infected, have a much more severe clinical course and a mortality approaching 20%. Why individuals with diabetes tend to have a poorer prognosis with infections has been investi investigated for 60 years. 50 years ago, hyperglycemia was identified as a toxin to white blood cells, which are the body's primary defense against infection. Above a glucose of 200 milligrams per deciliter, these cells are unable to ingest and destroy invading organisms. Abnormalities of innate immunity are classically seen in both obesity and type 2 diabetes, with marked elevation in circulating cytokines, such as IL-6, serum ferritin, and CRP, which may lead to the release of TNF and IL-1, resulting in the cytokine storm seen in the end stage of COVID-19. These are precisely the cytokines found to be elevated in patients with diabetes succumbing to COVID-19 infection. During the related SARS coronavirus epidemic in China, elevated fasting glucose was associated with increased death. Bodhi et al. recently reported that glucose impacts the prognosis in COVID-19 as well. Mortality among those with elevated glucose with a mean of 178 milligrams per deciliter was 28.8% compared to 6% for those with normal glucose and a mean of 116 milligrams per deciliter. As seen in most studies of hospital-associated hyperglycemia, mortality was almost three times higher in those without a previous diagnosis of diabetes. Thus, glycemic control may be a modifiable risk factor to minimize the severity of COVID-19 infection in people with diabetes. Glucose control is a critical part of diabetes management, even in the absence of pandemic, and is only made harder in its presence. People with diabetes are naturally reluctant to leave home in the face of sheltering in place orders. And the last place they want to go for diabetes management is a clinic, emergency department, or hospital where they could become infected. A weekly survey conducted by the Primary Care Collaborative with responses from over 1,000 primary care clinicians found 90% actively limiting well and chronic care visits. Verta Health not only bridges this care gap, but does so with a singularly effective paradigm, continuous remote care, with data-driven, proactive clinician outreach to patients, which is a significant contrast to today's predominant paradigm of episodic, reactive, patient-initiated care. 